Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a Stellar XLM update. Very important stuff. If you guys watch the debate, I have some extremely good information to follow up with you guys. And I think Stellar is gonna be doing pretty well shortly. I'm gonna show you guys some of the information and reasoning why I think they were pretty close to that. But let's get into the video. So first, the big news. Excited to announce from Coinbase Institutional that Coinbase Derivatives is expanding our suite of CFTC regulated futures. Get ready for silver and stellar contracts launching November 11th, 2024. Doesn't that look good there? Stellar and silver right next to each other. So Stellar is still making big plays. Uh, the, the big thing that people don't realize with Stellar, which we're going to see more in this video, is they have huge partnerships with Circle. They're great with Coinbase. All these big companies like MoneyGram, Stellar has massive partnerships with. So this is very good. This is going to continue to go far as we get regular as we get regulatory clarity. We're going to see Stellar stepping up more and more and more and utilization peaking more and more and more just like rwa.xyz. We can see Stellar's number 2 here. This will continue to grow as we get regulatory clarity. So that's very bullish for Stellar, right? In my video I said you guys can say Ripple's getting this and that and that, but they've been saying it for eight years. It's never been happening and they don't rank anywhere. Stellar's number two. This is why we follow Stellar. It's the same thing as trading, guys. You don't just, you know, you don't just see something that's in the a bear market at zero and think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this trade because it's just going to take off one day. No, you want to follow the trend. You want to follow the winners. You want to continue to stay ahead of the curb, right? And that's why we follow Stellar because it clearly ranks. This is just basic logic, right? So if, if if a coin is ranking extremely high in what's going to be the biggest market ever, which is world asset tokenization, but you're not seeing it reflect that in price, that's a good trade because you're getting in early, right? Be, before it catches up. And so there's been a consistent performer and news like this continues to back that up. This is why we're bullish on Stellar. So what is the big, big thing that happened recently? Well, I posted this, which I, I don't know how people in XRP didn't see this. Like, do they not watch David Swartz videos? Do they just turn it off and, and don't care? Because the truth is, guys, there's a lot more that we've heard from Ripple say than just this. But listen to this. Banks. It's very sexy when you close a deal with the bank, you know, and we do do we do that sometimes, but they're very slow movers. They're very slow to execute. They're very conservative. They're never going to be ripple success stories, and it's hard to get them to push the benefits down to their customers because that's risky for them, and then it highlights where they're inefficient. So we focused a lot on banks in the beginning just because a press release with a bank is a big thing, but we discovered they're just very slow to – like if all they want is a press release, and now we're like, hey, like we want to actually like move billions of dollars now, and they're like, yeah, we kind of don't. <laughs> so what I got from that, what most people got from that is – Banks and XRP, that's not a thing, right? People just think that's a thing, but it's not a thing. Uh, there's a lot of press releases, which is what David Schwartz literally said. If you guys don't understand, what is a press release? It is to get hype. I mean, that's what it is, right? A press release. They're, they're giving out press releases, but they're not actually doing tangible things behind the scenes. And what do all these YouTubers focus on? They don't show you RWA.xyz. They don't show you on-chain data. All they do is say, hey, look at this press release, which was what we're going to see again here from Mikkel doing again, and we're going to disprove him in this video again. So this is what they do, and, and Ripple feeds off this. This is how they get, uh, this is why they're billionaires, right? These guys are geniuses. They're marketing geniuses. They're great with the press releases, but when it comes to tangible things, they're not. And David Swartz replied to my video. So... He replied here and he said, I think people may be misunderstanding what I was trying to say here. The thing they misunderstand me to be saying is probably also something that I would agree with. So right there, what you're seeing is David admitting that, hey, yeah, if you misunderstand me thinking that Ripple is not working with banks, I'd probably also agree with that. But that's not exactly what I meant. And he basically goes on to say what he actually meant was helping small businesses is more impactful and meaningful to the company than it would be if they were to hypothetically help a bank, right? This just confirms, guys, this, I mean, watch, I, I left the whole link here so people can watch it. 
There's this one YouTube, one YouTuber. What was his name? He was talking mad crap about me. Whatever. I said his name in the 24 hours crypto. Was that his name? This guy blocked me. And he's he's talking. He's talking like he's all this all this big stuff, right? On the YouTube video, and he blocked me instantly as soon as he's heard of my Twitter Spaces of me going against XRP. The guy is an emotional wreck, right? And I don't want to talk too much about him. He doesn't show his face, and he's leading all these people. To think that XRP is going to be the next big thing, and do do and he and he's talking trash about me, saying I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Guy won't even debate me ever, and it's just it's just incredible, guys. So be careful who you're listening to. Again, listen to Ripple themselves. They tell you it's just for press releases. That's it. Why do you think XRP price hasn't moved at all? Okay, it hasn't moved at all. Now. If we look at what Mikkel said, if banks won't use XRP, then why are banks using XRP? And he puts this uh, tweet here. And this guy here, um, who's actually followed by Mikkel, dig digital asset investor and vet. So he's followed by all the big XRP guys. Obviously, this guy's probably a pretty big you know, XRP maxi. And he said, hey, Mikkel, I checked it out. Unfortunately, there's no confirmation that XRP will be used. If anything, Ripple could opt to use RLUSD instead. I believe they announced it since 2021 and XRP is still at 51 cents. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys in the difference between Stellar and XRP is if you get into XRP, you're going to get all these press releases where YouTubers are going to FOMO people in and pump the try to pump the price, but then Ripple's just going to dump on you and you're going to stay stable at the same price. But with Stellar, you're actually climbing and actually creating a real impact with the ecosystem. And that starts here with RWA tokenization, and it's going to continue in many other facets as Stellar expands because they do have the proper tech. So it's very obvious what you're eventually going to see is the crypto that just does press releases to get hype from retail, which is Ripple, is going to not perform well in the future. And the other crypto, which is the real one that actually has institutional adoption around the crypto, around XLM, because Ripple can skip by and they can use the stable coin or they can skip by and they can use this or that or whatever, right? Because they offer services that have nothing to do with XRP. But these press releases allow these YouTubers to speculate like it is XRP. So this is very dangerous for XRP holders. Stellar, you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting, right? And this is this ecosystem, which will be growing with regulatory clarity, will be on Stellar Network and Lumens will be the default currency that is how that works so anyways i replied exactly bro mickle is the fomo king <laughs> which is kind of how i you know that's that's what i think about that these xrp youtubers and he said i was listening to your debate with mickle and you made some compelling arguments mickle didn't answer a few questions that would have been helpful i believe ripple is using xrp for liquidity which explains why they don't need an ipo and their partnerships do not necessarily imply that XRP is being utilized. Yes, but YouTubers wouldn't want you to know that because it gets views to say that that there's a connection when there isn't a connection. I personally, guys, I don't need to do any of that because I actually run businesses on the side that in crypto and I work, okay? So for me, I don't need to come out here and just view farm all the time. I'll view farm for sure, but I mean, I barely have enough time to do these videos, to be honest, guys, like... I have so much stuff going on all the time and I and I love doing them and I want to get more involved. I want to do more of these debates, you know, and just have fun with crypto because that's what my Twitter is. I'm not really trying to farm my Twitter. Uh, follow me on Twitter, right? But <laughs> it's ridiculous what we see. Anyways, more good news with Stellar. Institutional players making power moves. FOBXX is now on base with Stellar leading their blockchain strategy. $410 million in assets speaks volumes. So Stellar is the key here. And that's interesting, right? So Franklin Templeton wants to get into RWA tokenization. They're mainly on Stellar. That's what most of this money is right here. And as we know, which I said in the debate, Stellar is very pro using other cryptos. Like, hey, you should, you guys should check out ETH too. Hey, you guys should use this as well. Uh, because Stellar is not just a maxi crypto. We believe that there's going to be other winners too, because like decentralization on top of decentralization is a great concept. And you cannot deny that, especially when we have chain link interoperability with CCIP. So it looks good. It looks good. And 
it looks even better to see that Stellar is leading all of this, right? They're everywhere. Stellar is everywhere from regulation to CFTC, from helping the biggest financial institutions in the world. They're here and we have to pay attention to that. So on to price, what are we looking at for price? Well, what we're looking at here um, for price specifically is probably another or a Bitcoin all-time high coming because we have sitting up here $2 trillion in liquidations overhead, which we haven't touched yet. And if, if you look at this week here, it shows you how, how Bitcoin price works is it'll come down and it'll snag that $2 trillion of liquidation real quick and run the other way, right? So in this case, long liquidations are going to be here and that's what that is. And it'll snag that liquidation and then rip up in price. Alternatively, we have liquidations straight up ahead, just, just up higher. So any day now, we could be tapping into this all this liquidity. The issue is elections, right? This is why I'm kind of just chilling out until elections. But if we hit all-time highs before elections, I would not be surprised because it's right there. I mean, the, the all this money sitting right, right there. The other thing, if I, oh yeah, you guys can see, uh, is at 47K, there's uh, 2 trillion liquidations sitting here as well, which is huge. So there is a very large case for Bitcoin to go lower. And I'll get into XLM's chart in a second, but yeah, there is a lot of money that's kind of sitting around here, right? I mean, this is a lot more broad than the actual liquidation chart because it's really 47K, which is sitting around here. But nonetheless, there's money to be taken lower, which we need to keep that in mind. But there's also, you know, uh, 1.5 trillion at 84K. And as price spikes up, open interest can increase, right? Because more people are going to be taking positions and more liquidation levels can be established, whether that's a little bit below uh, or even higher. So keep that in mind. But as of right now, there's a lot of opportunity for price to go upwards. A lot of opportunity for that. Even on Stellar, this is uh, actually Stellar's chart here. You can see there's a, there's really no money to take below. I mean, there's a little bit of money to take below, but comparatively to taking the highs, like a lot of people have shorts on Stellar going right now, very clearly, right? And their liquidation level is up here. So Stellar has probably a very good case to make that it's going to see good price action within maybe a few weeks from now taking these highs which is very nice uh, saying that kind of lines up with Bitcoin as well. So that's what we can expect for price here. Little movements. Uh, realistically, it's going to it's going to take Bitcoin dominance to fall. So when Bitcoin dominance falls like this, this is where we get our massive bull runs, right? And you're either ready or you're not ready. So that's the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you got good information. If you did, leave a like and subscribe because... I mean, these XRP YouTubers are lying to you guys. It's it's Stellar is the one. It is Stellar. It's not XRP. Take that out of your brain. You're being lied to. Just because you see patterns doesn't mean there's something substantial in the patterns that you're seeing. You know, Ripple makes these like patterns and connections look significant with their press releases, as David Schwartz said. But it's not about just seeing patterns and thinking, oh, this is significant. Uh, I see a lot of YouTubers do that, right? They try to put things together and they try to make patterns out of things. And this is, you are they're going to get wrecked and they're going to get a lot of people wrecked. What you actually need to do is look at the specific things themselves and the specific details and seeing the truth about them, right? And, and the specific, so not, don't just look at, oh, this partnership connects to this, to connects to this, connect to this. And I, I figured it out, right? You get this like, you know, this huge aha, you think it's an aha moment, but it's not real. What you need to actually look at is, is have a very in-depth understanding about specific facets about the crypto, right? And then put together the big picture of everything. So that's my recommendation for people. Do what you want though, guys. Uh, as always, have a great day. And we are going to see where Stellar goes very shortly, very soon. 
and it's going to be interesting. I'm looking at XRP. Get out of here. Disgusting. But yeah, again, with Stellar, you do have this buy option here. So if we do dump, I, if we dump from here, I think that's a good buy just on the fact that all our liquidations are above. So if we dump here for whatever reason, I mean, I think we have to eventually visit this. There's just too much here. There's too much to grab, too much money to grab here relatively. Uh, and it'll stack even more, right? As we, as we go down or as price moves, this will probably continue to get bigger. So keep that in mind, guys. E and this is what equal highs makes. Uh, for the traders out there, like if you make equal high and then a near high and then a near high, that's when you start to stack up way more money. And I, I've explained that to you guys a lot of times, right? How price kind of makes the equal highs and then you get cash above and cash below. So when you get a situation, you can see clear as day here, right? With XLM, price is kind of going down and it's able to, to steal liquidity from below. But since it's making equal highs above, there's a lot of money to take here. And same situation for Bitcoin, right? Which we're starting to tap into now, uh, but we haven't fully taken advantage of it. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. I'll keep you guys updated as always. And uh, see you in the next one. Peace out.